Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I'm really excited about releasing a product that is going to cure a problem or a concern that's been around since the inception of my first system. Um, I have had this concern from clients, uh, be it past and future, and that concern is, isn't there a better cool cooling solution than using such a, a loud, high RPM cooling fan? Um, and guys, just to give you a breakdown for those that aren't familiar with the cooling system I incorporated in my systems, um, the fan that I choose to use is a Sanyo Denki 48 volt, 10,000 RPM, high rev tack fan. The reason I choose a high RPM fan is in this platform at 60 by 38 mil, you have the highest output of airflow at 60 cubic feet a minute, that's 60 CFM. That is a lot of air power at will so to speak. So that generation of wind, naturally the byproduct is high decibels. High decibels to some clients, uh, or like I said, future clients can be irritating. Um, now we all know that have been around CNC for quite some time. Noise is never usually concerned when you're in a shop, you're not going to hear it anyways. That being said, um, that's, that's still not the way I wanted to go. I wanted to do, I wanted to come up with a solution that would incorporate the technology that we have available to us and basically apply it to what we deal with every day with our CNC equipment. So that being said, it led me to this design right here. Um, and I'm going to give you an idea of what we're looking at. This little board right here incorporates a PWM fan control, the same type of fan control you'd see in a computer-based system. Um, and with this kind of high output fan system, you're dealing with more like a server computer system. But what I wanted, and I'll give you the breakdown, is there's a lot of different devices on the market. There's variometers, um, there's digital outputs that you can set temperatures on. I wanted something as autonomous as possible. I didn't want you guys have to play with things. I didn't want you to have to set up different things. I wanted to make it basically plug and play, you know, hook it up, um, attach what you have to attach, and you more or less have an autonomous fan control system that is based on temperature. Let me give you the breakdown of how this works. First of all, um, we know that CNC systems, truthfully, are in different voltage formats. I sell the G540, that's pretty much my flagship system, but I know a lot of my clients may not be using a G540 or maybe using it, but using a smaller grade power supply. That being said, I wanted this unit to support virtually all voltages for CNC. This unit accompany, accompanies that by actually going through and allowing you to use a 12 volt, 24 volt, or 48 volt input to control your fan. So that means you have just a huge array of options for cooling okay the other factor i wanted in is it had to support dual fans because on my pro grade system i have a uh, more or less a wind tunnel effect where you're drawing air in you're extracting the hot air out i wanted it to support two fans it had to have the right amp rating this unit supports a cumulative amp rating of three amps that means you can run dual fans up to three amps combined so if you have one and a half amp on one fan one and a half amp on the other you're pretty much good okay once again, supporting that 12, 24, and 48 volt format. I wanted um, a buzzer, an actual audible buzzer, to be incorporated in the unit for when a certain set temperature is reached. This unit has that. And that gives the end user a little more knowledge about the environment they're working in. The buzzer on this system is set to 55 degrees Celsius. If you exceed 55 degrees Celsius, it will, it will allow a piercing noise. And again, for those guys out there who are saying, I really don't want that, I even incorporated an on-off switch on the board itself. So if you wanted to, you could turn off the actual warning buzzer. Do I recommend that? I don't recommend doing it for the first go around to at least give you an idea of the shop environment that you're running your system in. It'll also keep a good tab, uh, tab measurement to give you guys a breakdown. If you are ever incorporating you know, troubleshooting, you can go through and find out if the system is overheating really easy, just letting the system run for a couple hours and see what temperature you're at maximally. Um, once again, there is no digital input on this as far as you actually seeing a, a temperature readout. I did that intentionally because again, I wanted to keep this simple. Okay, how this unit works, I'm just going to show you right now, here's the heart of it right here, is just a basic thermal coupler. It just comes on here and you can see it's got a hole in it. And how this actually works is you would attach this to the back of the G540, preferably in the center of the drive on its back plate. And why I say the center of the drive, guys, you want to make sure it's in the center because you want it to be mounted in the hottest spot 
on the drive itself. Uh, you don't want to mount this where the drive is going to have a temperature fluctuation on the corners or whatnot. Um, you do have a hole if you did want to use a screw. I don't recommend that. I highly recommend using thermal epoxy because it's going to conduct heat much better, give you a more true reading. Um, that being said, this thermal coupler comes pre-wired. It does come with its own plug. I'm going to tilt the, the actual board up in a second. I just want to finish what I'm saying. Um, and you can see here that the unit itself is fully sealed. It is completely waterproof um, for different applications. So if you did want to use this underwater, you, te you technically could. Um, that being said, like I said, it does come pre-wired. The plug is already on this. It just simply plug and play and attach it to the back of the G540. I prefer mounting this somewhere underneath your actual heat sink, preferably in the middle of the drive once again, and that will give you the optimal conductivity of allowing this unit to measure the temperature where it should be. This way, when the fan kicks on, you're good. As far as the fan kick on temperature, I'll give you a breakdown on that. You're looking at about 86 degrees Fahrenheit, the fan will turn itself on. Up until that time, the fan stays off. Once the fan turns on, I'll give you the idea of the board, you can see here, you've got your, green, your red power LED right now, she's plugged in. I've got her hooked up to a 48 volt power supply. And you've got the PWM module right here where the LED is not lit. Of course, it's not lit because the fan is not active. Once that fan exceeds, and that thermocoupler exceeds 86 degrees, you will see the fan start turning at low RPM, okay? When that starts turning at low RPM, you'll see this LED flicker. It'll start flickering. If the temperature increases all the way up to maximum, it will become solid, okay? Once the system cools down, it will slowly begin to flicker again, reducing RPM until it turns itself off as the RPM drops and, and once again reduces its threshold under that 86 degree Fahrenheit marker. So just keep that in mind. Um, like I said, it's totally autonomous. Once again, you've got your buzzer here. You've got your on off switch for the buzzer. So like I said, if you guys do your actual, if you actually incorporate it in your system, you, you find out you know, when the system is actually hitting that threshold or if it ever does, hopefully it doesn't. That's what we're, get, we're, we're actually hoping for. If it does though, you'll know when, you can look and see, you can either turn it on, turn it off, but I'm telling you guys right now, and I've said this in, in numerous videos, do not run your equipment without or outside of a climate controlled environment. You are running electronics, with you know robotics this is not something you want to ha deal with with humidity extreme high heat i have clients in nevada california um florida i'm in florida i can tell you guys we deal with humidity like a jungle i mean it will wreck your electronics if it is not climate control you want a climate controlled environment remember if the temperature outside is between 80 to 90 degrees and I'm not talking this crap you know uh, this is what the weatherman said at 75 in the Sun your temperature is always going to exceed that and when you have your Sun beating on you know your shop nine out of ten times with no AC you're at least 10 to 15 degrees hotter that means your ambient temperature going through your controller is that much hotter and if the drive itself is generating its own heat you're basically circulating hot air that's not what you want to do you want to make sure the ambient temperature outside of actually in your shop is somewhere between 70 to 74 degrees optimally that's the optimal temperature if you go into a server room um, for data centers you're not going to find them running 150 degrees Fahrenheit they're not they've got to be climate control for that same principle you guys are dealing with robotics now this is not like you're working with a bandsaw so just keep that in mind and that's why once again it's really imperative to pay close attention to what knowledge you're gaining from this from these type of um, uh, components so over here once again you do have the red LED light you can see that right there if you look at this block you can see it says VIN plot positive which is voltage in positive and VIN negative this is for your power supply so whatever power supply you're using whether it be 12 24 48 it comes in right here F, F1 positive and F1 negative, that goes to your first fan. F2 positive and F2 negative, that goes to your secondary fan. Okay, so if you wanted to create, like I did in my prograde system, uh, a more or less wind tunnel effect with an in and out fan, one, air, one fan actually incorporating, bringing cool air in and one fan extracting hot air, you could easily do that with this. P1 and P2 are not used. Um, those are for PWM modules. You guys already have a thermal sensor on here, so you really don't need to use that. They put that on the board just to, because they had to do that with the block that was designed for it. Overall, it's, it's not required. So overall, your hookup right here, and again, you guys don't have to memorize this in the video. I have a wiring diagram I already made, super, super simple, and you're all set. 
Once again, keep notes over here, you can see that the board is actually utilizing my thumb screw mounts. Why? Because we like toolless equipment. It makes things easier to work on. On top of that, you're also getting standoffs, nylon standoffs, because that's what you're going to require for these boards. Okay. Other than that, the unit itself is a little over an inch and a half in width and it's just under three inches in length so I'm gonna give you exact dimensions for mounting but it's very easy to incorporate this in your box and once again the only wiring you're really doing um, is the power supply the fan and then of course just incorporating your thermal coupler wherever you're gonna put it so other than that you're good I want to show you how this unit actually works now so I'm gonna heat up the thermal coupler with a heat gun and you guys can see exactly how this is gonna function Give me one second Right now, I'm heating up the thermal coupler. Let's see. Okay. Now, if we look at this, we can now see our light is pretty much solid. As that RPM of the fan drops, and you guys will hear that, you'll see that light begin flickering. You can easily hear the tone of the fan is dropping. Now, you're starting to get a little flicker. RPM is reducing some more. Temperature is dropping. I'm trying to pick that flicker up on camera, but you can really, really see it. Let's see if we can pick it up. Yeah, now it's really flickering, unfortunately, and I can't tell if the camera's picking it up, but it's flickering, and then it'll just shut off once the temperature reduces. Big difference in noise. Big difference. You're running only about a third of its capable RPM right there. So will keep running. Now we're getting massive amounts of flicker. You can definitely see it's active. Let's see if that's picking it up. There it goes. Temperature now is broken under the 86 degree marker so now the fan shut off i'm now going to overheat it to where it gets up to that that uh 55 degree marker celsius to show you exactly what it sounds like when the um the actual buzzer goes off you can hear the fan speed accelerating there you guys go that will turn off in a second. As soon as this cools down, I'm going to put the uh, thermal coupler in front of the fan. There it goes. We broke the threshold. Now you hear the fan as she continues to cool. Let's see if I can show it on this angle. There you go. Hands off. There you go, guys. I think this is uh, going to really change the game as far as what's available and as far as the option um, to add autonomous fan control to your system. Something that I think is, once again, long overdue, but I wanted to do it right. I think I've done that. It's taken me some time to do this um, and figure out a solution. Again, I am going to be offering this kit uh in two different formats right now it'll be with the fan um you can incorporate before i get questions on this you can incorporate the thermal coupler that's used in the vampire cooler for real ultimate protection where if you kept exceeding once uh the temperature once you exceed that temperature past this you hear the buzzer if it kept going up you can actually install the thermal coupler and the thermal coupler uh the thermal switch excuse me would actually shut the system off Okay, so that is another option to do. I'm not going to do it in um, base level systems because most guys are not really going to want that because they always worry about if they're in the middle of a job and that happens, that could be catastrophic on certain jobs. I've been told that, so I always watch that too. I want to give you guys the option, but either way, you're going to have the ultimate in what's available now in technology for um offering cooling for your system and that's really what I wanted I want you guys to have options you know not every application is the same I tell you guys all the time nothing in this field is cookie cutter and when it comes to these type of devices you want something that you've got peace of mind with 
Um, and again, this is going to be a whole kit. I will sell it with the thumb screw mounts. I'll sell it with the screws, the actual mounting hardware, everything you see here. This way you have a full ready to go package and we're taking, you know, all the thought process out, hook it up, connect your thermal coupler to the back of your system, whatever it may be, and you're golden. That's what we're looking to do. So again, um, if you guys want to add this to a previous system, of course you can do that. I get that question all the time um, because I've been asked about this even before I released a video on it. Um, you can add this to any system that I've built previously. Very, very simple. Once again, it's tiny in format. Um, for systems that you guys are looking at having built for yourself, if you want me to incorporate it, it will be an option. I will not do it as standard because there's different clients who feel that they don't they don't care about the noise. So if they don't care about the noise and it's not a big deal, let the fan run 100%. Plus it gives you guys a, a, a better variable as far as pricing. Some guys want to do it. Some guys don't want to do it. So that's why I say I'd rather you guys know what you're getting involved with with this right away. And in this way, you make a, you know, an educated decision based upon where you're working, what you want done and how autonomous you want your system to be. You know, do you want the fan running all the time or, you know, do you really want to have an automatic temperature control system built into the system? Now you have the option. If you guys are building a system, you've got a plethora of options with the voltages that this unit supports and the fans. So you can use large fans, small fans. Again, um, these fans, the beauty of them are, these are 0.29 amps at 48 volts. So you've really got a lot of opportunity here to run two of these. You're not even close to stressing this unit. So just keep in mind, cumulatively, once again, amp output is three amps total. So if you have two fans, guys, that means it can only add up to three amps. Um, that being said, I will, of course, have a really simple wiring diagram to make wiring the, the unit into your system a joke. I will also give you the exact dimensions, and you guys will be all set. So, like I said, I was really excited about this. Um, I'm trying to do more videos to cover um, these type of designs because I know it answers a lot of questions I'm getting on a routine basis. On top of the fact it's, it's another solution to another dilemma that a lot of you guys run into, especially as you get into more professional level equipment. Um, that's what I'm trying to do is you really just gear myself more towards that right now. So once again, for you guys that have been following me and supporting me, I, I love you guys. Thank you so much. And I will be doing more videos in the future. Um, if you guys do have any questions, um, you can message me on my personal email at storm, S T O R M two, three, one, three at gmail.com. Or you can message me on my EV dealer store on eBay. Um, I will give you guys the link uh, below in the description to both of these so you'll be all set as far as what you want to do. Um, if you want to review the product, of course, that'll be in the link description as well. And you guys will be set. Once again, thank you all. Take care.